Thank you. Joining us on the dais from South Carolina is head coach John Staley, student athletes Destiny Henderson and Aaliyah Boston. We'll start with a statement from Coach Staley, and then we'll take questions for the student athletes first. Um, just want to just want to say, uh, <clears throat> just UConn played a, an incredible game um, today. Um, they they cut the lead to six, and they just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. Um, and I thought our players were just really resilient, and man, they didn't want to lose this so close to to be a national champions. They did not want to lose uh, this battle, so they, you know, they they kicked it in another gear to get it done. We'll start right here in the front row with the student athletes. Uh, David Cloninger posted Courier. Destiny, uh, you seem to take over really there in the third quarter every time they came back and, and cut in the lead. You were the one hitting the big bucket. Just how good were you feeling out there? What did you see from their defense that said, I can exploit this? Um, I feel like my, my teammates just put me in a good position to score the basketball. Um, I just found open gaps, and um, when they collapsed in the paint, um, Aaliyah or whoever it was that was passing the ball um, just found me out on the perimeter, and I just let it fly. Next question in the front row here. Mike, you have a Gamecock Central for, for both of you guys. I mean, to, to know that you guys have the target on your back, number one team from the beginning of the season to the end. What is that a testament to, you'd say? I mean, I think it's just a, tes a testament to our team and how how good we are. I think Coach Day did a great job of scheduling us a hard non-conference schedule, which kept us prepared, and we were able to fight through all of those games. And so it just showed how um, determined we were to continue to be successful. Question in the very back, standing. Hi, Henny. Katie Barnes from ESPN. Uh, for you, Destiny, when uh, – the game expired and you realize you're a national champion. You just had a career high performance and a great performance all around. How did you feel in that moment? Um, I really didn't even know I had a career high, <laughs> to be honest with you. But when when people spoke about it um, and, and let me know that it's just even a, a more blessing and just an honor to, to do it in this moment, a special moment that all of us are going to remember forever. And I just feel like my teammates, Again, just, I can't thank them enough. Um, my coach for just put me in the best position. These last two years has been the best two years of college basketball for me. Next question on the far right there. Uh, hey, Aliyah, Pete Yacobelli with the AP. Um, what is your connection with uh, Candace Parker? Had you met her before tonight? No, I, I haven't met her, but ever since I was young, just playing basketball, I just loved everything that she did, especially in WNBA. I think. I like just how she was able to use her size and do everything she wanted on the floor. And so, I mean, when I saw her in the crowd, I, I just had a moment. Next question on the left side here. Uh, hi guys, congrats on a great game. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, the idea of, of a, a sports dynasty and if you feel that you guys have kind of cemented your place in basketball history. I definitely think we have. I think over the past couple of years, you've just been able to see this program and how it just continues to grow. And I think it's just schools that kids are going to want to come to because of the um, the atmosphere that we have here. Um, our fans are the best. And Coach Staley is one of the best coaches and she has a great coaching staff and they just continue to push us every single day. Next question in the front row. Ali, uh, you and the entire team have said throughout the season that this was the goal. Uh, with your uh, being able to come back next year, what's your goal for next year? Same as this year. Next question right next to Rick Henry, WISTV, Columbia, South Carolina. This is for both players. Ever since you stepped on campus, you've seen how loved and respected the 2017 team is for winning the first national title. So what are your thoughts the emotions that you've added a second natty to the accomplishments for the Gamecocks. Do you want to take that first, Destiny? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I feel like they just, just put us in a position to really just be positive and that anything can happen. Um, that, that was a really good run for them that year. Um, and then last year, you know, we came so close and we, we fought, we fought, we fought since day one, and we knew that we can come out on top this year. And that's what we've just been instilled, and our coaches had just prepared us for this moment. Um, our teammates, 
just believed in us since day one. And we all just came in just ready to play and fighting with grit. Next question in the back, standing. Hi, Destiny, Katie Barnes again. Um, you know, when you were a sophomore, Don Staley sat you down and said that you could be a starter, but you're not going to be. And now here you are two years later. How would you describe that journey and what it's meant to you? Um, I feel like it was a journey that led me to this moment. I feel like she just, again, it's, it was easy to trust her. It was easy to trust the process and had to believe and had to buy into my role. And I feel like it was, it was really worth it. And she's, she's a great coach. Um, and you just have to really just buy in and, and trust, the, trust the process and great things that happen for you. Next question on the left side here, Nancy. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, well, you said that you believe that you guys are now in the, the dynasty conversation. Did it mean more then to take down a team like UConn that has been really the standard bearer or has set the standard for so long in women's basketball? I think it was just really good to win a national championship. And I think, I mean, to answer your question, I, I really would say yes, because I feel like a lot of people use that as a standard when, when you look at a program like South Carolina and how much it's developed and how great it is. And I feel like coming into this game, you know, the conversation was about how Coach Ariema was 11-0 in title games, and but Coach Daly was 1-0, and now here she goes. She's 2-0, and I think it just shows that the type of program that she's built and and how great it is being a dynasty. This question here. Thank you, Jonathan Tannenwald from the Philadelphia Inquirer. For Aaliyah, what does Dawn mean to you, especially on a night like this? Coach Daly, I mean, she really means the world. She's like a second mom off of the court. Um, she's someone that I can always depend on. But on the court, I mean, she's a great coach that pushes me um, to be the best player that she knows I can be. She, she's just really the best. And I'm just so blessed that I was able to commit to South Carolina and have this type of leadership to help me grow as a person on and off the court. Next question here from Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. For both players, I wondered if you could comment on Coach's outfit tonight. Um, Destiny, specifically you, because you're the designer of the team. Um, we are also, Don going to need details on <laughs> the jacket. I mean, her fit is always on point every single game. You know, she she comes in the locker room. She sits down really fast because she knows we're going to say something. <laughs> and it's like, as soon as we say something, she's like, what are you talking like, about? Fine. She acts so nonchalant about it, but yeah, she's she definitely could dress. <laughs> Alia, did you want to comment? I mean, she got it like that. I mean, I'm usually just I just five, but I mean, I love watching her outfits because I always have a comment because I know she's gonna rock it. Question here from Michelle. Uh, Michelle Volpe, ESPN.com. Malia, we had a chance to talk to your mom and dad the other day, and they, they were talking about how from the time you were a little kid, you were always ready to go. When it was time to practice, whatever, you had that full commitment. Can you take us back to that little girl? Did she did she dream this big, and, and did it all start then, if you will? Yeah, um, I mean, growing up when I first started playing basketball, I mean, my initial dream was just to go to college on a full scholarship. And as I started to grow older and really pay attention to basketball, I was like, well, I want to win national championship and go to a school where I'm appreciated. And now looking back at that little girl, I mean, she's probably really excited because we've done everything that we have wanted to do since we were little. And I can't wait for the future. This question here in the aisle. I guess this time with the state newspaper, Henny, I wanted to ask you kind of about moments again, like I was asking yesterday, just out there post game, what are some of the small little moments of that day that you're going to remember for the rest of your life? I feel like before the game, um, our, 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 our practices, um, Zaya specifically saying, everybody let's play, play for our why. And I feel like that right there really just um, took us to the next level and made us really realize why we're here and why we do what we do. Next question on this side. Thank you very much, Judy Gatson from Columbia, South Carolina, WYS TV. For coach and our student athletes, I can't let you leave the news conference without talking about the fans. They might've been outnumbered, I'm not sure, but they certainly were loud tonight. Talk about what their commitment to be here for you uh, to help push you to this national championship win means? Their energy is always, always with us. Um, I feel like they're, they're the best fans ever. And the way they support us, um, whether they're here, whether they're outnumbered, you, you're always going to hear them no matter what. So uh, I just really appreciate them, thank them uh, for all the four years that I've been here. 
um, just really appreciative. We have time for one last question for the student athletes. We'll go right here. Congratulations, Claire Hanna with TSN. Given the heartbreak of the last two seasons, last year losing in the semi and the COVID cancellation, how satisfying is this moment? And do you forget about all that now? I mean, it's, it's very satisfying. I mean, this goal coming into school, winning a national championship, and last year we fell short, but um, it's not something that we could continue to hold on to. But I guess you can say it's definitely in the back of our mind because now we have a national championship to hold on to. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll continue with questions for Coach Shaley. We'll start right here in the front. Dawn, in 2017, I believe you had the uh, the story about Carolyn Peck and the net that you carried around. What, what is, is there anything like that for this year? And what are you going to do to celebrate this championship going forward? I actually, um, I got my 2017 piece of the net that I that I had in my pocket. Uh, while coaching, I actually had it at the start of uh, our NCAA tournament um, in the first and second round. I just had it in a mesh bag hanging off of my backpack. And I just, you know, chose today to bring it out and just to, to have with me um, throughout the game. Um, <clears throat> I just think just moving forward, like the, the net's going to represent something, something in our game something that will advance our game. Uh, I've been thinking um, some of our black male coaches, they don't get opportunity. Okay, and I'm also gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it a little bit a step further. Some of our black journalists don't get opportunity to elevate. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna try to cut this net up, give them a piece of it, and just, just hope that, that it will be something that they can utilize to advance in the area that that heart desired to in their in their field. So I'll do that. It's gonna be hard trying to figure all y'all out. So if y'all can just email me or find my number, text me and let me know. I send me your address so I can I can make it happen. <laughs> Question here, Doug. Hey Don, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Along those lines, I believe you're the first black coach, men's or women's, to win two championships ever. Does that mean anything special to you that you're now in a class by yourself that way, which maybe hopefully more will join you down the road, but you're the first one ever. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I mean, this, this, this journey of, of being a coach has been truly gratifying and I, I have to reflect on this part of it. Like it, it comes with a great deal of pressure, um, pressure because we were the number one team in the country throughout the entire season pressure to come into the NCAA tournament and, and, and be the favorites by, by most people, not all. Um, it's certainly, you know, not who we were up against today. And I think that changed the narrative a little bit because of the success that UConn has had in our tournament. So um, I felt a great deal of pressure to win because I'm a black coach, because, because they're, if we don't win, then you bring in so many other, you know, so many other um, just scrutiny. Um, like you can't coach, you had enough, you know, to get it done, but yet you fail. You feel all of that and you feel it um, probably 10 times more than anyone else um, because, you know, we're, we're at this platform. And I got to address something else as well while I got the mic. I don't know who wrote an article about our players not being out on the on the on the court for the national anthem okay so our we're just creatures of habit creatures of habit i think the national anthem was played at the i don't know 12 or 10 minute mark and that's just not the time that we're we're out on the court because of our pre-game ritual okay if the national anthem is at uh, triple zeros like it was today you know, we were out there standing for the national anthem. So whoever that person, journalist was that wrote that, please do your research, ask the questions before you go out and write an article. And then I'm called all kinds of names. Our players are called all kinds of names. Before you do that, please fact check. And don't, you know, don't put us under the gun like that because it was a distraction for us. I didn't let it be a distraction. 
but it was a distraction. I mean, people all on, all on my accounts and all of that. And I could take the heat. I could take the heat. But when you write something and it's during one of the most important times of, you know, of our season, let it be factual. Let it be factual. And I think we could come up with a whole lot of different things you can write about our basketball team um, during this time than to write something like that that was full of untruths. And then uh, other articles come out from that. And then we're called unpatriotic. We're called, you know, some of some some of the nastiness. And and it's because we, we're a predominantly black team. So so when you do that, understand your power. And if it's if it's facts, I can't fight the I can't fight that. But but they were full of untruths. Question here, Jonathan. Don, Jonathan, ten, ten, ten. Jonathan, ten, welcome to Philadelphia. <laughs> so, um, you've spoken on this podium and, and so many times about you know if you can see it and you can be it, and being a role model for black coaches. And tonight, in the wake of this win, so many black women around the sport of women's basketball have praised you for that, for being it that so many people can see. To hear the praise from so many people around the sport to you, what does that mean to you? Um, you know, it, it really makes me emotional. It does because, because I, I am their hope. Like I am their hope. I'm the, I'm, I am the, you know, the person that, that they strive, not me, just where I sit when the national championships, that's what, that's what they want to do. Um, and if I can be that ray of hope, if I can be, um, a vessel of theirs um, to them being successful, you know, I, 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 I am a willing um, giver of this game because the game has, has given me so much, like, I mean, so much, like my, my cup runneth over when it comes to what the game has given to me. So I, I am forever in debt and trying to repay the game. And I do that with, you know, just, just giving them my time, my expertise, or just my opinion on things to help, you know, advance young coaches of all color. Question in the back, standing. It's on in the back, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Congrats on the win. Um, two questions for you. The first is you made a point to say, you know, you wanted people to see Aaliyah's smile, not that crying face from last year. What did it mean to you to see her climb the ladder and cut down the net tonight? And then the second question is, how did you spend your day with a 7 p.m. tip off? I'm just curious, shoot around, it only lasts so long. Did you get your hair done? Did you get your nails done? <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly happy for Aaliyah um, because, you know, one, I think a, a player like Aaliyah doesn't realize her power. I think for, she's, she's really a nice young lady and she wants, everything to be smooth and smooth sailing. She doesn't want any conflict. She's non-confrontational. Um, and when you are like that, you don't really understand your, the power of, your, of, of being dominant. Like it's, it's such a, you know, probably a masculine um, adjective, like to be dominant seems, seems masculine. Um, but it's it's not. It, it is very few people are very few athletes are able to be dominant. And when you are one of those athletes, if you don't have somebody around you that recognizes it, they will allow you to just fly under the radar and blend in with other people who are who who aren't gonna excel at the rate that that Aaliyah can excel. So um, I've been around a lot of great basketball players who are who have been dominant. And I saw it in her, and I would not allow her to be anything less than that, even if I had to hurt her. And a, a lot of parents don't want to hurt. They don't want their children to hurt. And it's almost a disservice to them. Like, it's, it's, it hurts them. Like, you have to put your child in an uncomfortable situation in order for them to grow. And I don't think her parents, her parents are that way because they're very disciplined. But from a basketball standpoint, I think I'm the perfect coach for her because I recognize 
what her gifts are and, and how to walk into that. And then my day, my day, I, I couldn't sleep. So I, I was up, I walked an hour on the treadmill at six, six to seven. Um, then I packed my clothes up, packed my suitcase up. Um, and then we had shoot around. I actually had some breakfast today. I usually eat breakfast, but the eggs here are good. Um, so I had breakfast and then we had shoot around. Then after shoot around, um, we play cards a lot. We play cards. So we played cards for a few hours, um, got my hair done. And then it was time for pregame. And then after pregame is just, we're, we're getting ready for the game. So it was long. Could we have played this game at three? Yeah, but I actually liked it. I liked that we were in prime time, you know, uh, one of two of last games of college basketball. So I know, I hope it was uh, watched by a whole lot of people. Um, and I'm, I'm just, you know, basking in our glory of winning the national championship. Next question from Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Don, first, who are you wearing? Can you give us the details of that? The that's who. You, that's what you say to celebrities when they're on the red carpet. Oh, uh, who are you wearing? See, yeah, I didn't like know what that. What brand are you wearing? Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Louis Vuitton. I <laughs> 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 wanted to ask you was, um, I don't know if you've been aware of this, but um, Sue and Diana have been doing an alternate telecast and bringing on guests. And today they were telling stories about you as an Olympic teammate. Um, Diana detailed when you made her go get donuts for the entire team, her first season. And she was really offended because she was the national player of the year and you <laughs> told her that didn't matter. Um, but I was just curious, you know, they, they seem to bring in a lot of new fans to the game with their telecast. Um, how important is that, that these two people in the twilight of their careers, they're going to do something else that can bring eyeballs to a game that's exploding in popularity. Yeah. I mean, it is, it has grown our game. Like, like, I, I don't really think that's innovative, you know? I think it's out there. We got we got the people that can just walk into that and be that. Like, we could have been done something like that. But I do think it takes someone like Sue and Diana who um, people want to hear, you know? They want to hear their greatness. They want to hear the stories of, you know, who impacted their lives and their careers. Um, and I think they're pretty darn funny. Like they're, they're funny, they're hilarious. And I did tape it, I didn't see it, I, I did record it. So I'm gonna watch what they were saying during our game um, today when I get home. Next question here in the front row. Not done, Mike, you have a game clock central. What did you learn about this journey from winning that second title compared to, to that first one? And how much difficult was it to be able to get back to that point? Um, you know, I, I learned that that culture matters. I learned that chemistry matters. I learned that, you know, the majority of your team really has to be locked in, like the majority. Um, because I, you know, part of our a big part of our team are, are made up of young players that that if you know if 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 they were the majority, they wouldn't know how to navigate through a season in which you're the number one team throughout the, the entire season. And they don't know the heartaches of, of what took place last year um when we fell short um in the semifinals. So you need players who have you know, an incredible, insatiable desire to want to succeed and win a national championship or else it won't take place. Next question here, Nancy. Nancy Armory, USA Today. Uh, Don, we asked Aaliyah about the, the question of a dynasty. Uh, do you feel you guys can, can, that you can be in that conversation yet? And, and as a, a black woman, a black head coach, how important is it for you to be to have a dynasty, to be at the top of the game for a long, consistent period of time. I, I don't, I don't think winning, you know, winning two national championships or going to final four back to back is considered a dynasty in, in, in my day and age, Aaliyah and social media. Yeah. They, they really think they're doing something really good. Um, but, you know, just look at the, 
just look at the tradition of, of UConn and what they were able to do. You know, they're the standard. If it takes winning 11 national championships to be a dynasty, you know, I'm probably going to fall short of that because I'm not going to be in the game long enough for us to win 11. Um, what, what I think is important as a Black woman and coach is the way you do it, the, the way, like the, the example that you set uh, for other coaches to follow. Um, I, am, I am one that respects the game. Um, and I, you know, I know, you know and, and I'm, not, I'm not a coach that thinks because we got it going on, because we're winning, that, that I'm this, you know, almighty speak to speak my opinion on things. No, I, you know, even if things are like, we lost to Missouri, I thought it was great for the game, like super great. They beat the number one team in the country. They, you know, they act like they won a national champion. That's great. Like, seriously, we lose to Kentucky um, in the SEC tournament championship. Do I like to lose? Heck no, but it was really good for the game at our expense, but I get, I get the big picture. I do. I get the big picture. Um, so I just want to be a great example of how to do things the right way and, 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 and keep our game in a place where the integrity is intact. Um, Cause that's, that's the way we'll grow. That is the exact way we'll grow is just, just lifting each other up, you know, giving us a platform where we're, you know, we're encouraging, um, we are, we are, we are helping each individual be the best that they can be and succeed. Next question in the front row here. Don, I want to go back to the word dominant. When you look at all the ranked teams that you beat this year, do you think this team should be remembered not only for winning a national championship, but for being one of the most dominant teams we've seen? I, I, I would. I would with, you know, with the schedule that we played, um, with how we lost our two ba basketball games, um, with how we played. Like, I don't, I mean, we, we didn't have, like, dominating performances, like, all of our games. Um, but part of being dominant is, is being able to win when, when you're not playing to the best of your ability. You find a way to win. Um, so, so, so yes, for, for this year, and I won't take it into next year, but for this year, from the beginning to the end and how it ended, yes. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'll take a question in the back row. Uh, coach Staley, Katie Barnes, ESPN.com. There you go. Hey, Coach. Um, how would you describe uh, the importance of Henny's uh, performance tonight and her overall impact on your program? Um, you know, Destiny Henderson is the epitome of trust in the process. You know, her mom, epitome of trust in the process. Um, she never, she never wavered, even when, you know, even when Henny had an out to leave after her freshman year. She had an out, had terrible, terrible experience. Um, but I did tell them during the season. I said, if you just hang in there with me, the, the next three years of your career won't, end, won't, won't be like this. You will really enjoy it. Um, and I was, I was glad that I had that conversation with them. Um, and it ended up this way. But she's trusted the process. Um, she's a quiet soul, smooth operator. Um, but she had a different look this tournament because she knew it was going to be her last tournament. So each and every game, whether she, you know, had great, great performances or not, she was locked in. And if she wasn't, this wouldn't happen because, you know, you know, basketball has a funny way of, of, of repaying you for not treating it the right way. But she treated it the right way. Um, and she was super aggressive on both sides of the basketball, like, like we started her off on, on page and we really, you know, plan B was to put a bigger body on her, like rebuild. And we didn't really have to do that because Henny was super focused on just making it really hard for, her. you know, Paige made some incredible shots, but we wanted 40 minutes of 
making her work, making her work, exhausting her. So, you know, minute 30, 35, 40, you know, those shots that usually go in, you know, she might have some tired legs. Penny was the, the catalyst for that. We're over time, but we'll take a few more questions. We'll go in the back row. Hi, Coach. Congratulations. This is uh, B. Terrell with Made for the W. Uh, following up on the question about Henny, after the 2020 season ended, she had a very heartfelt message for Ty and Kiki and called them her favorite group of seniors. So now, after she, what she's done in this game this season, what is your take on Henny as your senior leader this season and as she's etched her name in your program's record books? Growth. I mean, you, you want your seniors to end their careers the way Henny into her career, not necessarily, you know, national champion, but just growth. Like there are certain things that you need to, that need to take place each and every year of your college career. Um, Henny was patient enough to wait for those things. And now she'll go on, you know, like she'll be in the record books. She'll be the, the one that will remember her performance. She will remember her. Um, doing a job both offensively and defensively. And I just know that, you know, whatever franchise gets her in the WNBA is going to get a good one, like a low maintenance, high performer. Question right in front of, oh, sorry. That was exactly where you were. Christina Williams with Girls Talk Sports TV. Coach, I just want to follow up on something that you said earlier in regards to giving a piece of your net to Black journalists. Why is it important to have diversity in the newsroom? You said why? Yes. I mean, we're colorful. Like, we, we bring a different perspective um, that a lot of times we're not in the room. Like, we're not in the room, you know, and pretty much everybody could, could think the same ways because it's that's the way the system works. But the moment you bring, you know, a, a diverse person in the room, um, it's a lot different than what the norm is. And we need, we need differences. Like I see Coach Boyer sit here, like we go at it back and forth. And we know at the end of the day is, is just love. Like, you know, I, I said a few choice words were today during, during the game. Um, you know, but I listen to her. Like, I don't want somebody saying the same things that I'm saying. You grow when there's a different perspective in the room. You may not agree. You can agree to disagree agreeably, but you need a diverse of people in all walks of life and all professions um, because that's where, that's where growth takes place. Next question in the aisle here. And then we're going to take these four remaining questions with their hands up. Hey, Don, uh, right here. Uh, Jackie Powell of Bleacher Report. I saw you take the championship trophy and bring it to the pep band. You know, can you explain to me why, you know, you made that decision and why it's important for you to keep people like that involved? Yeah, I got a fascination with the band. Like the band, they just seem like they have so much fun. That's one. Two, um, they didn't get to experience the, the NCAA tournament last year. And every time we've won something big, a championship, um, you know, they play, they, they've enjoyed it just as much as we have. And they don't get, they don't get a whole lot of exposure. Um, and I just, I, I just think young people, I, I want young people to experience, like I want them to remember um, great experiences. Like I know some of our fans who have, who have been band members, they follow us, they get in a car, they get on flights and they're here um, because of how we made them feel in moments of, uh, you know, moments of like, like great pride. You know, they're, they're, they're students at the University of South Carolina. Um, and they've, they've been here for a long time in this city. Um, doing the thing that they they love, and and why not? Why not have them have pictures with the national championship trophy? Um, because they they in fact um, helped us. I mean, they created an atmosphere that uh, that we we hear them. 
like we hear them. They're a part of the whole um, experience of being in a being in a gym. Um, so I think it's pretty cool experience for them. Next question, right next door. Don Howard Magdal at the next. Congratulations. I asked you back in November whether this team had a chance to be. It was this team going to be your best team ever? You said we have a chance to be. And so I'm circling back to you now, as I told you I would. Is this your best team ever? And if so, how and why did you get there? Um, I, I do think this is our best team. Just the, the, the roster from top to bottom, um, the commitment to their roles. Um, and then you got to go back last year, like no other team, you know, have, have played in back-to-back -back Final Fours. Um, and I, no other team has been in the number one team in the country from, you know, beginning to the end and then win a national championship. Um, so, I mean, I think, and then they can defend, like this team can really, really defend. Like it is, like I think we're an elite defend defensive team. So that's the separator from, uh, from, our, from, our, from our other teams. This question over here. Dawn, I wanted to ask you about little girls who look up to you and this entire team as role models. And after this incredible accomplishment tonight, what you would say to them about pushing forward and achieving their dreams, overcoming obstacles and disappointments. Yeah, I mean, this, you know, I mean, when you, when you watch a sports team, when you follow them, you, when you see them after they lose basketball games or they have poor performances, um, and then they're able to come and take a picture with you or they'll wave at you um, in those moments. Those are great like teaching moments because we're, we're people first, we're people first. And if, if, you can, if you can make somebody feel good, like really feel good, like a young person, if you make them feel good, they grow up thinking about those experiences and they in turn will, they will venture out and look for people for them to make feel good. And then it's just a cycle that continues. And, you know, if we have enough of them, you know, we'll have, we'll have, we'll live in a better world. We'll take two final questions back here and here. Randall again with Nuts and Bolts Sports. Wanted to ask you, um, after UConn hit back-to-back -back threes late in the third, wanted to know what you said in that timeout and how your team responded to what you said. Yeah, I said, here we go again. I mean, I said, here we go again. We take we take bad shots. We turn the basketball over. And, you know, UConn licks their chops in, in those scenarios. So then I think I, we called a timeout. I did call a timeout. Usually I don't call a timeout because I know exactly what was taking place. But our team needed a timeout just so we can refocus, so we can understand that we can't have too many of those instances um, um, where we allow them to, to take uncontested shots. Um, and then they understood and they went out and made better decisions and we opened up a bigger lead. Last question here. Hi, Don. Amanda Wool Watchbox out of Columbia. I need to know, will you be getting another dog? And if so, <laughs> What will he or she be named? I got a name picked out already, whether or not Champ agrees on <laughs> wanting a sibling. Um, that's a different story. Like it's been four years and he, he, he just, he doesn't get along with other dogs. I got the name picked out. You wanna know the name? The name is Natty. So just imagine Natty Champ, Get over here. <laughs> Sounds good, right? <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thank so, you. Thank you.